G'day guys, uh, thanks for joining another walkabout. Just back out here at the old Gunny camp. Figured I'd come back and do a quick little overnighter, um, just kind of construct a cool little shelter. Might even try and start the fire a bit later on with the old hand drill fire by friction method. So, haven't really done that much before, so yeah, keen to give it a go. But um, the weather's meant to roll in tonight. It's meant to yeah rain a fair bit through the night and tomorrow's meant to be pretty heavy. So yeah, it should make things pretty interesting. But anyway, I think first things first is let's get the shelter set up.
Yeah, I think I might put the awning out tonight because uh, it's meant to rain. It'll just give me that little bit more protection. So it's just going to mean I'm going to have to move the fire pit out of the way, which is fine. But yeah, I think that um, it'll be pretty beneficial to have it out. Yeah, sweet. I think I should be far enough away from the top. Um, but yeah, it's still nice and close. It should reflect some heat back into the shelter. Yeah, it's just coming pretty well. Hopefully she'll keep me dry tonight. But yeah, pretty happy with her. Here we've got some stringy bark. I'm just going to take some of that and that'll help me create the bird's nest to get the fire started. All right, well, it's about 4.30, so it's probably going to get dark in about half an hour. So I think it's about time we get the fire started. So, it's, like I said, today I'm pretty keen to give the old fire by friction hand drill method a go. Uh, I've only done this a few times, probably about three or four times, and I've um, been successful once, so <laughs> we'll see how we go today. But uh, this type of timber that I'm using, this is actually the flower spike of a xanthria, or a grass tree. Um, you can probably see one in the distance behind me, um, in the back of the frame. Uh, if I get time tomorrow, I'll sort of go through and tell you a little bit more about that plant, because it's a very, very useful plant to know in the Aussie bush. 
Um, but anyway, I'll show you how to sort of prepare this um, and hopefully we can get this fire started. Yeah, so this nice straight bit I'll use as a hand drill and this bit I'll use as a baseboard. So I'll show you how to prepare that. Yeah, so with the hand drill, I'm just going to do a little bit of a cheap method. Uh, I've seen a technique where you sort of make, you get some cordage and you make two little thumb loops and that way you can apply a nice even downward pressure. So as a, as a bit of a novice, I'm going to sort of take all the help I can get. So what I'm going to do first is just create two little notches into here so that the cordage can uh, sit in. Yeah, so just like that, just two little notches on either side. That way the cordage can sit in those grooves. Yeah, so I've just created two little loops in the end of the cordage. That way I can put my thumbs through there and apply a nice even downward pressure. As for the fireboard, I'm just going to chop the rounded corners off, or some the rounded edges off. So it's a bit more of a flatter board. Yes, yeah, so that way it's a little bit squarer. All right, and then I'm just gonna sort of create like a little square and then just gently just pick out just a little bit of material. That way the that way the spindle will sort of sit in that groove nice and evenly and won't slip out as much. Oh, doesn't seem to be biting. Um, I don't know if you can notice that, but the spindle keeps sort of creating this little, I don't know, weird shape. It's obviously like the hole's sort of not forming correctly and it's just not spinning properly because it's kind of got this bump here, which is sort of that bump there. Yeah, kind of stops the spindle from spinning properly. So, uh, I'm not quite sure about this. It's starting to get pretty dark too, so. Not quite sure if I should just scrap it for tonight and try another time. Yeah, I didn't really leave myself much time to play around with this, unfortunately. Uh, frustrating. All right, so I've just scraped off that little bulge that was on the end of the spindle, so see how we go again. Uh. <laughs> it's just not staying in the groove, eh? It's like I almost need the baseboard to be bigger than this. It's like the spindle's just as big as the baseboard and it just keeps sliding out. Ah. Ah. No, nah, screw it. <laughs> I'm going to use a flint and steel instead.
Damn it. Lost it. Ah, everything's a little bit damp because it rained yesterday. So, ah, so frustrating. That's all the char cloth I have too. Damn it. I should have, um, yeah, restocked my char cloth last time I used it, but silly me, I didn't. So, ah, looks like I have to use the old uh, fire steel now. When all else fails, just go to the trusty fire steel. Yeah, so we've got two new crafties to try tonight. I uh, haven't had either of them before, so first off we got the Filter Haze, and then we got the Capital Brewing Co. Coast Ale. Particularly keen to try this Filter Haze, eh? Um, their other beer, the, was it the Extra Pale Ale, is the tits. So very, very keen to try this one. Uh, it's 6.3% as well, and uh, 1.8 standard drink. So yeah, a few of these, and uh, I think you'd be well on your way. So anyway, let's, uh, let's start off with that one. All right, let's give it a go. How good is that sound? Oh man, that is delicious. Oh, that's so hoppy. Oh man, that's delicious. Definitely worth checking out if you like your big hoppy beers. Man, so good. Ah, uh, this afternoon, bit of a disaster to be honest. <laughs> Cannot believe it. Well, actually, I can't believe it. It's uh, it's me we're, we're talking about. So <laughs> things never really go to plan, do they? When I go camping, um, yeah, I was really, really kind of hoping to do the old fire by friction thing, the old hand drill, but just yeah, I don't know. I think the um, yeah, sort of the the baseboard, um, the fireboard. I think it was just a bit too thin, eh? And the spindle just was not catching. Um, I was just, yeah, I think the spindle was, was sort of yeah too big for the the baseboard, and so it just kept slipping out, and I couldn't get it to yeah to catch, and ah, uh, pretty frustrating. But I didn't want to waste any more time on it because it was going it was getting dark pretty quickly. So lesson learned. I just got to really, if I plan to sort of uh, make the fire like that next time, just got to start early, like start at like three thirty or so. That way, I just give myself um plenty of time to muck around with it. Because it's a very fiddly thing doing the whole fire by friction, uh, especially when you've never done it before. There's a uh, lot to learn. So, oh well, that's um, all right. that's what we're out here for. Just a bit of trial and error. Same goes with the uh, the flint and steel. <laughs> oh yeah, I cannot believe. Um, I, oh, I thought I was so close to having that. Like it was just smoking away. Um, had two good goes at it because I had two little bits of uh, of uh, char cloth in the tin. And silly me, last time I, um, I last time I did the whole flint and steel, I yeah it didn't top it back up. I should have uh, yeah charred some more cloth like that time. So I definitely when I get back home, um, I'll definitely grab some uh, yeah new cloth and char it. Uh, even maybe try and find some natural tinder to char next time. But yeah, just goes to show it's always good to carry multiple um, forms of yeah fire starting. So like I had the fire still with me this time, but yeah, I think mean, it's a good lesson to to learn from. Just always carry backups. <laughs> yeah, it's got something pretty exciting coming up next month. Uh, me and my girlfriend Laura finally decided to book a trip out to Alice Springs. Uh, been wanting to go out there for a long time, so finally, uh, yeah, bit the bullet and um, booked the tickets the other day. So we're going out there for nine days. We're going to hire a van and yeah, just drive around and check out the sites. Like go check out Uluru and check out Katajuda. Uh, Kings Canyon and things like that. So, very, very keen. We want to go out there for a long time. So, 
yeah, pretty stoked day. Eh? Cannot wait to sort of see um, yeah, the Red Center and uh, driving up to Uluru, I think that'd be pretty special, eh? So very, very keen. So if you guys uh, have any sort of recommendations like to check out around Alice Springs, feel free to hit us up because yeah, I haven't really sort of done too much research on the area. Just I know that I just want to go there and just jump in the car and just explore it. So yeah, feel free to hit us up with um, some recommendations. But man, I think it's gonna be such an awesome trip. Just sort of a, immersing yourself in the in the red center and all the culture and the yeah the sights. Cannot wait, eh? I think it's gonna be a really cool trip. I'm trying to decide whether I should film it or not. Um, yeah, it's always that fine line like that you sort of put the camera away and just enjoy a trip or, but a place like that, <laughs> when I've got a channel like this, going out to the Red Centre, to Uluru, it'd be almost silly not to film it. So yeah, I think I might film, like, film sort of a, a small video. Uh, I don't want to sort of take it over because I know my girlfriend wouldn't really want me sort of running around with the camera too much, but um, yeah, I'll sort of make maybe a small video. But yeah, really keen to get out there. Really, really keen. So, yeah, less than a month now. I think we'll fly out on the 17th and uh, get back on like the 27th or something like that. So, yeah, should be good. Looking forward to it. Anyway, probably about time to put some grub on. Uh, tonight I've got a pasta, sort of like a buttery garlic pasta. Uh, I make it all the time at home. It's kind of one of my um, go-to meals at home, but I've never made it camping, so we'll see how we go. But uh, yeah, it's really tasty. So, anyway, let's get that on. Yeah, it's in the tucker bag. That's the dinner tonight. So we've got some sweet potato, some garlic, some broccoli, got some asparagus, and uh, just the pasta. And then as well some butter. I've got some sweet potato, just dice that up. Then we've got some broccoli or broccolini. And then lastly, some asparagus. Some olive oil. Oh, I almost forgot the mushrooms. Ah, oh, damn it. <laughs> Whoops. Yeah, I think that's about done. Chuck in a nice doll for butter. We'll just put in the rest of the butter. Alright, I think it's about done. Oh man, this is looking and smelling so, so good. Now I'm just gonna chuck all this. Usually, when I'm cooking at home, when this is in the, the fry pan, I usually chuck the noodles in the fry pan and just mix it all around and cook it for a little, like a few seconds longer, but, because uh, this fry pan's uh, limited in size, I'm just gonna chuck all this into the, into the cup. See if I can get it in there. Oh, I'm gonna lose so much of this food, I can tell already. Oh man, this is looking so good. <laughs> oh, it's gonna be so hard to mix around. <laughs> the only problem when camping is you're very limited with uh, cutlery and utensils. You can make life pretty hard sometimes. All right, sweet, that's all mixed through. Usually if I was at home, um, I'd usually chuck in 
some parmesan cheese as well uh, even some pine nuts as well that goes down the absolute treat but in the when in the bush this will do so let's dig in Let's give this a go. Oh yeah, so, so tasty. <laughs> a little bit gritty though. Uh, must have got some sand in there somehow. But she's still good. <laughs> yeah, definitely sand in there. Oh well. But yeah, it's just such a simple pasta, eh? I definitely recommend trying to make it at home if you, like I said, you just use whatever ingredients you've got in the fridge, whatever vegetables, if you want to put some meat in there, you can. Um, and then yeah, you just need butter and garlic, which you pretty much always have, so. Very simple pasta. But so tasty. Yeah, so not quite sure about that rain. Seems like it's held off. Oh, I can see stars as well, so yeah, not quite sure what the weatherman was up to, but maybe a bit later in the night it might come over. But yeah, so far so good, which is uh, which is always good because there's nothing worse than sitting out here in the rain and trying to cook dinner. So yeah, got pretty lucky. All right, well, I'm just going to finish this off and um, I'll probably get back to you guys before I go to bed. Alright, let's crack this guy open now. Oh, such a good sound. Yeah, right. Let's give him a go. Hmm. Not bad, not bad. Very drinkable. Except going from that one, the, um, the filter, which is hoppy as hell, which is absolutely delicious. I love that beer so much. Such a good beer. Going from that to this, big difference. But um, yeah, this is the kind of beer, more of a session, eh? um, more of a sessionable, <laughs> mum with that up, more of a sessionable beer, I reckon. You could have a few of these on a nice summer's day. Yeah, not bad at all. Yeah, so I've had a few guys sort of message me over the last couple of months and um, yeah, sort of ask like if there's any other channels out there, uh, Australian channels that sort of do this kind of outdoor camping, bushcraft kind of stuff. And yeah, to be honest, there's not too many out there, eh? Um, I'm probably one of the very few that actually do this kind of uh, style of video in Australia, um, which is surprising because this country is a bloody beautiful country, um, has a lot to offer. So I'm surprised there's not more people out there doing this kind of stuff. Um, you look at the sort of UK and Canada and uh, America and it seems to be flooded with this kind of um, content. But in Australia, there's not many guys doing this kind of stuff. So, which is the whole reason I started this channel in, this, in the first place. Um, but it, there are a few guys who kind of do something similar. Uh, another guy, Eric Off Track, uh, he's sort of from the Canberra area. He's worth checking out. Um, he's only got a small channel, but He's, he puts out pretty regular stuff and um, he goes to some pretty cool locations as well. So yeah, Eric off track is definitely worth checking out. Uh, another guy who does some really good videos is Chris Behrman. He's sort of based down on the south coast. He doesn't, different kind of style of videos. Uh, he doesn't really talk in any of the videos. So they're kind of only short sort of 15 minute videos. Um, but yeah, they're really good. He goes to some really nice locations and uh, yeah, he's a really good fisherman as well. So um, he always goes spear fishing and yeah, just line fishing. So. It's always good to watch your stuff as well. So Chris Bearman, um, so Chris Bearman, just check him out. You've also got uh, Bushcraft Survival Australia. That's uh, Gordon Denman. He runs that as well. I think he's sort of based more. I think Darwin. I think he's based in, uh, or maybe even Northern Queensland or something like that. But uh, yeah, he's he's got some good stuff. He's a lot more, um, yeah, a lot more technical. So he doesn't sort of do many of these kind of uh, overnight trips. He does a lot of more, a lot more sort of technical stuff and go through different uh, techniques and. Um, skills and stuff like that. So he, he's very educational. So definitely worth checking out him. Uh, and then who else have you got? Um, there's another guy, Fire to Fork. He's got some cool stuff. Um, he's starting to put out some cool things. So he's based over in WA. 
Uh, same with Salty Davenport. I, yeah, I think that's it. Salty Davenport. Um, he's got some cool stuff as well, but not too many videos. But um, yeah, he's got the potential to go pretty big if he sort of uh, puts a lot of effort into it. Because yeah, he goes to some nice places. So, uh, but yeah, I think I think apart from that, there's I can't really off the top of my head. I can't really think of anyone else in Australia that does this kind of stuff. And obviously overseas, you've got your big guys like your TA Outdoors and Joe Robinett and stuff like that. But there's another um, person overseas that I really like to watch. Uh, name's Karina from Lexus Outdoors. She's really cool. Um, I sort of spoke to her a fair bit on social media and stuff. And I think she just cracked the 16K mark the other day, which is pretty cool. So um, yeah, she's based in Canada and does a lot of sort of canoeing trips and things like that. And yeah, her, her and her boyfriend sort of do it and their, their dog Grizz. So which is the star of the show. <laughs> They've got a very cool dog. So um, yeah, definitely worth checking out Alexis Outdoors because she does some really cool things as well. So, but yeah, anyway, just thought I'd uh, sort of give you guys a few tips on a few other channels if you want to sort of, yeah, broaden your, your horizon a bit with it. But um, yeah, anyway, uh, I think that's probably about me done for the night. It's been a pretty long day, so I'm pretty keen just to sit back and enjoy this beer. Got no gin tonight, just bought the two beers with me. Although I've got a little bit of tawny and a hit flask as well, so I might crack that out after the beer. But anyway, I think that's me done for tonight, so I will see you guys in the morning.
So this morning for brekkie, I'm gonna make a halloumi mushroom roll. Should be pretty tasty. So I've just got some halloumi here wrapped up in this beeswax wrap. If you haven't seen these before, uh, they're a great alternative to glad wrap. Uh, it keeps things nice and fresh, they're reusable, and it uh, limits your plastic intake, which is always good for the environment. So yeah, definitely worth um, getting some of these. Just gonna cut this in straight down the middle. Some nice big slabs. Now I've just got a nice big field mushroom to go with it. So I'll just slice that up. And just pour some olive oil over it. All right, well this water's well and truly boiled, so I'll just take that off now. Oh yeah, how good does that look? Oh man, so keen for this halloumi. Yeah, well, I think that's about done. Just taste up some Turkish bread as well. Oh, ow, hot, 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 hot. Oh, she's a bit crispy. Yeah, I think she's about done. Hot, 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 hot. All right, so got the turkey spread, and it's got some cubed mayonnaise to go on top. Then we'll chuck on the halloumi. Actually, no. First, we'll chuck on some rocket just from the garden at home. We got some halloumi. And then we'll chuck on the mushies. And lastly the egg. We'll put his little hat on and Bob's your uncle. Oh man, so keen. That is some gourmet stuff right there. Oh, you'd pay 20 bucks in a cafe for that. I think this is probably the best breakfast I've done camping. This might have to be a uh, irregular. Oh, that smoke. Oh, that's so good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so no sign of that rain. Um, all night was a nice clear. It was actually a really nice night, eh? Like the stars were out, there's no clouds. Um, we had about, probably about midnight, the full moon, or almost full moon came across. Probably about three quarters or something like that. 
And man, it was so bright, like everything was just lit up. So it's pretty cool just laying in bed, listening to some music and uh, just, yeah, just looking out over the bush with the moonlight. It was pretty nice. But yeah, I was expected to, the forecast was meant to be from 9 a.m. this morning, just meant to be rain, but it's probably about 9.30 or so now, 10 o'clock now, and yeah, there's a few clouds, but it's pretty sunny, eh? It's a little bit windy, but fine, so got pretty lucky this weekend. I wasn't even gonna come camp, and when I saw the forecast, I thought I'd sort of just ditch it and um, yeah, do it next weekend or something, but pretty glad I managed to squeeze this little trip in. So yeah, got pretty lucky. Anyway, I'm just going to finish off my brekkie and um, I'll get back to you guys in a bit. So here we've got an acacia long foliar or a golden wattle. And I'll show you a handy little trick to keep them clean in the bush. So if you just pick off a few of its leaves, try not to sort of uh, focus on one branch, try and sort of pick them from all different branches so it doesn't sort of hurt any one particular part of the tree. Just get a little handful of the leaves and I'll show you what to do. Yeah, so you get pretty grubby when you're out in the bush, so you just get a handful of these leaves and just crush them up. And just add a little bit of water. You see a soapy lather starts to form. Yeah, so really good way to freshen up. Yeah, so here's a pretty tasty bit of bush tucker tonight. Uh, this is called a G-bung. Uh, these fruit aren't quite ripe yet. It's probably got another couple of months till it ripens, and sort of more towards the end of winter. Uh, but when they are ripened, they're sort of darkened in color and then they'll fall to the ground and that's when you know you can eat them. It's sort of got like a little stone inside of them, but you sort of eat the flesh around the stone. But yeah, there's so many different uh, species of G-bung in Australia. This one in particular is sort of like a needle leaf G-bung, but you can get sort of broader leaf ones as well. But yeah, you get so many fruit on one tree, so it's a pretty good little bit of bush tucker to know.
All right, guys. Well, that's me all done and dusted for this trip. It's actually quite a nice little weekend day. Um, not quite sure what that weatherman was on about because it didn't have any rain whatsoever. So it's actually quite a nice uh, winter's weekend out in the bush. So sort of glad I didn't pay too much attention to the report and actually came out and um, yes, yeah, had a nice little overnighter. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Um, as always, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate your support. If you're new to the channel and you like this kind of stuff, uh, feel free to check out my other videos. Anyway, uh, till next time guys, hooroo. Thank you.